Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to connect to a remote Synology NAS using OpenVPN. Now when I say connect to a remote Synology NAS, I really mean creating a VPN network interface. And that will allow us to either connect to our home Synology NAS from our remote Synology NAS or vice versa, meaning from our local Synology NAS to our remote Synology NAS. This is really simple, but it's super powerful. And most people use it for off-site backups, meaning they're backing up their local NAS to their remote NAS off-site. Uh, I have a video coming out for that tomorrow, but I wanted to break them apart and just show how you can create a VPN network interface in this video. So before we get started, I have written instructions for everything in the description. You also need to be aware that we'll be connecting via OpenVPN. Now there's a few other options, but OpenVPN is my favorite. If you need to set up OpenVPN, I have a video on how you could do that on a Synology NAS, and I'll leave that in the description. But you could also use pretty much any device that you want. It's very popular to use a Raspberry Pi as well. Uh, the setup process will be a little different, but it's generally the same idea. So what we're gonna do is on our remote NAS, we're gonna head over to the control panel, network, then the network interface section, and we're gonna create a new VPN profile. And at the next screen, you're gonna select OpenVPN. There's a few options, but we're only gonna be looking at OpenVPN in this video. So the next screen that comes up is where you're gonna enter all of your profile information. But before you do, what I want you to do is add a line into the config file, into your OVPN config file. I have that line in the written instructions. But the idea is that if you run into any issues when you're trying to connect, you'll be able to actually navigate to the log file and see exactly what's wrong. The other thing that I want to point out is that Synology appears to be a little finicky when it comes to the config file itself. So it's probably a good idea to just export a brand new config file, enter in the basic information like your DDNS host name, and just leave it as is because you can really configure OpenVPN config files a lot. But for whatever reason, I had a lot of connection issues when I used those customized VPN files. So it's a good idea to just use a basic config file and go from there. Now in this section, if you're using OpenVPN on like a Raspberry Pi, if that's where your VPN server is configured, you're gonna have to enter in some of that certificate information at this section now. Synology's VPN server is actually pretty old and it doesn't utilize those certificates and that's the reason why we're not actually adding them. But if you're using something like a Raspberry Pi, you might have to enter that information here. You can then proceed. And at the next section, I normally check off the first and the third option. The first option is to use the default gateway on the remote network. So if you watch my video on setting up an OpenVPN server on a Synology NAS, what that setting actually does is it configures a full tunnel VPN connection. So all of the traffic from your remote NAS will go through the VPN server. That's what we want. The third option just allows you to connect anytime the connection is actually lost. And then the second option, you can kind of play around with it. I haven't played around much with it, but the idea is that it allows other devices on that remote network to use the Synology's internet connection to connect back. I haven't played around with it, but you're free to do so. At this point, you should be able to connect to that VPN profile and see if it works. If it works, great, you're done. If it doesn't work and you run into issues, that's why we configured that uh, log file a little earlier on. What you can do is you can SSH into your Synology NAS, and if you're not sure how to do that, I have a video, I'll leave a pop-up for that now. Uh, but what you can do is you can SSH into your Synology NAS, navigate to the log file location that we specified, and in that file, you can use the page down uh, button as soon as you open it, but you can find out exactly what's wrong with that file and it will hopefully point you in the right direction as to what's going wrong. Generally, these log files are kind of what gives you the clarity that you need to fix the issue. So hopefully it will do that for you and then you'll be able to actually connect. But that's the entire setup process. Now, if you want to connect to this remote Synology NAS from your local network, you have to create a static route in your router. Uh, I have a few videos that show you how to do that. I also will leave that in the written instructions so that you guys know exactly how to do it if you want to set that up. But as soon as you do that, you'll be able to connect to that remote Synology NAS from your local network. And at that point, you can kind of use it however you want. I have a video, like I said earlier, coming out tomorrow that will show you how to uh, back up a local Synology NAS to a remote Synology NAS using Hyper Backup. And it uses this as the foundation. 
uh, mainly because it does it as securely as possible. But there's a lot of different things you could do, and it's really based on your use case. Um, so that's really all we have for today. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks, guys.